So we just, we were discussing the fact that elemental titanium is not produced within the earth or on the surface of the earth, not through volcanic activity, not through hydrothermal, not through leaching. To elemental titanium requires electrolysis in order for the atoms to come together in a metallic mass. Now, titanium was first discovered, theoretically, in the late 1800s. And in the 1950s, which is like 70 years ago, titanium was first refined from ilmenite, which is titanium ore. The ilmenite that's found on the earth has anywhere from 1 to 3 percent titanium in it when it's melted in a giant vat and an electrode is is applied is dropped into the vat the titanium atoms collect on that electrode which then can be just lifted out of the molten titanium ore and the titanium has been collected, it's been removed. The waste product, molten carbonates, are dried out, cooled, dried, crushed up, and sold into industry for other uses. The titanium itself then can be melted and poured, machined, hammered. It can be processed like a regular piece of metal. But there is no other process on the earth for elemental titanium to be created. And so the question comes, okay, if we have a piece of elemental titanium, it has, and it's a natural piece, it, it has a, a form that is not able to be produced by man then where did it come from? Well, science tells us that the Earth simply does not have elemental titanium on it in a natural state. It just doesn't exist. It has to come, this titanium object had to come from space. It's not an opinion, it's just a fact. It had to come from someplace, and since it, since it cannot come from the Earth, space is the only option left. Now, having come from space, and because titanium does not melt in the outer atmosphere in the same way that iron nickel does, we would expect, if it did come from space, that it would be covered in impact marks from its time in outer space. And what do we see, in fact? We see thousands and thousands and thousands of tiny and large impacts some of which deposited micrometeorites welded them to the surface some of the dep some of the impact marks blasted the material out probably blasted it out into space and in the form of dust or maybe other micrometeorites but we would expect something that came from space to be impacted by the fast-moving meteorites and asteroids 
and particles in space. That's exactly what we see. And because titanium is not affected by atmospheric ablation, we would expect the outside sharpness and the impact marks, the scratch marks, the, the, all of the evidence of having been struck so many times, we would expect that to remain visible and to be sharp in detail, which is exactly what we're seeing. So theoretically, if a titanium meteorite existed, this is what it should look like. This is consistent with that look. Now, the question comes, is there, is there other evidence here that, that we're looking at an object that actually came through our atmosphere? I mean, we see the embedded particles, but let's say, let's say that man had some method of, of, of launching these particles at high speed and was able to get them to weld into the surface. Okay, let's assume that man could do that, though man, I don't think man's that clever. Well, when we look at, when we examine these these embedded pieces of iron, iron nickel, some of them with more nickel, some with less nickel, or, you know, different ratios of iron and nickel. When we look at those, we see that, and it's not easy to see here, but I'll show some photos, and under the digital microscope, we actually can see that the iron that is visible on the surface of this meteorite, the iron particles, have fusion crust. In other words, the iron was affected by the, up, the entry into the upper atmosphere as this greater object heated up. The iron melted. The iron meteorites that are embedded in the surface melted and they developed a fusion crust, a black, hard fusion crust that is, that is easy to see under magnification, but is not obvious when we're looking at the large object, the large meteorite. When we look at the large meteorite, we expect to see we expect to see fusion crust covering every aspect of it, except where the fusion crust has been flaked off or worn off. But we shouldn't expect that because titanium does not form fusion crust. We should instead expect to see fusion crust on the iron particles that are embedded. And that, in fact, we do. And so, as we look this meteorite over, we examine it from different angles, we can identify very clearly locations that have clearly visible fusion crust, easily visible fusion crust that is formed on the surface of iron that is embedded, is welded into place from high speed impact. This here is a iron remnant. It's, it's located in a blast crater. It's right at the top and it's welded into place. And here's another one over on this side. And both of these have a visible 
black fusion crust. It is unmistakable. It's absolutely undeniable. So, if evidence of coming through the atmosphere is what allows a find to be classified as a meteorite, if it's a class 1 stony, class 2 stony iron, or class 3 iron nickel, then I would say that these tiny objects that we're seeing, this is a meteorite, and this is a meteorite, this is a meteorite, and there's many more on here, and they happen to be attached to a large titanium meteorite. Thank you for watching. We'll continue.